Hello class, Mr. Linder here. In this discussion, I want to talk about how to calculate the concentration of a complex solution. So in previous discussions, we've talked about how it's fairly easy to convert from molality to osmolality. But in a complex solution, it would be difficult to determine what the actual osmolality is. For example, in a simple solution where we have one molality of sodium chloride, we looked at how we could calculate the osmolality by simply knowing the number of particles in the solution uh, from the sodium chloride. So if you have one molal as your concentration, and we know the number of particles is two particles for every one molecule of sodium chloride, we can calculate the osmolality as two osmoles. Now that's fairly simplistic. But if we have a complex solution, for example, if this is a blood vessel and we're looking at blood in the cardiovascular system, for a complex solution like blood, it would be very difficult to determine what the osmolality actually is by looking at all the individual particles or solutes that are in solution. We would have to take into account all of the ions in solution not just sodium and chlorine, but also calcium and potassium and hydrogen ions and bicarbonate, etc. We'd also have to look at proteins in solution, like albumins and clotting factors and complement proteins uh, and so forth. We'd have to look at globulins uh, in solution. And so now all of a sudden, there's a lot of solutes in this connective tissue that we call blood. And so in order to determine the concentration, that would be very difficult if we were trying to look at individual number of particles. In textbooks, you'll notice that the concentration for blood is typically represented as about 300 milliosmoles, or that would be the set point uh, that's given. So how do we determine that blood actually has 300 milliosmoles of concentration if it's difficult to know the number of particles that are actually circulating around inside the blood. So with complex solutions, what we use is a concept called the freezing point depression. So let's take a look at freezing point depression and what that actually means. If you had a container of pure water, so this container is pure water, what we oftentimes call distilled water, DW. If we took the temperature at which this pure water freezes at, we would get zero degrees Celsius. We know that pure water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. However, water isn't always pure. There are going to be solutes within the water that actually will cause the water to freeze at a different temperature. You may have noticed that on a freezing day, uh, let's say a pool doesn't freeze over. And the reason a pool doesn't freeze over is because there's lots of solutes dissolved within the water, especially chlorine. And so the freezing point of that water is not zero degrees Celsius there's a depression of the freezing point. And it turns out for every one mole of solute, within a liter of water, you can depress the freezing point by minus 1.86 degrees Celsius, okay? So for every mole of solute, you can depress the freezing point by negative 1.86 degrees Celsius. So you may have seen this done at some point in time where somebody's putting salt on steps or they're salting the road in the mountains. And that's to prevent any ice from forming on the steps or ice forming on the roads so that cars don't go sliding off the road or you don't go sliding down uh, your staircase. And so by adding that salt, what you're adding is solutes. 
And what you're doing to the freezing point is you're lowering the freezing point at which the water will freeze. And so it'll keep the water liquid longer. So we can use that information to calculate the concentration of a complex solution. If we knew the freezing point of the complex solution, we could do a quick mathematical calculation to determine what the osmolality of that solution is. For example, if you have a container of blood and you can measure the freezing point of that blood. So let's say we put this blood in the freezer and we measure the point at which the blood freezes. And let's say we get negative 0 0.56 degrees Celsius. So we know blood is mostly made of water, but if it was pure water, it would have froze at zero degrees. But blood isn't pure water. We know that blood has solutes in it, right? The ions, the albumins, the globulins, etc. And so because there's particles within the blood, it depresses the freezing point. And so it turns out that blood, okay, this particular sample of blood, froze at negative 0.56 degrees Celsius. So we can do a simple mathematical problem where we take negative 0.56 degrees C and we divide it by the freezing point depression of water, which is negative 1.86 degrees Celsius. And we know that degrees Celsius is going to go away, and we know that this is moles of solute uh, in liters of solution, so we know that this is a concentration, and so what it's really giving us is osmolality. And so if you take your calculator and you divide 0 0.56 divided by 1.86, the negatives will cancel, and you'll get an answer of, let's type that into our calculator, and you'll get an answer of 0 0.3, and it goes on, 0 0.301 uh, osmols. So we can leave it at 0 0.3 osmols. And that's now our concentration in osmolality of a complex solution. If you take the 0 0.3 osmols, and you convert it to milliosmoles, we know there are 1,000 milliosmoles per one osmolality. We can cancel out osmolality, and now we have 300 milliosmoles as our concentration. And so it turns out that blood freezing at negative 0 0.56 degrees Celsius is the set point for human blood, 300 milliosmoles. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps. Take care.